So you were just taking the, the hundreds in, in the stores and just getting change for them? Yeah, at first that was um, like everything kind of progressed and I learned from my mistakes and learned how to make more money. But at first it was just, yeah, like going into a store, buying 10 bucks worth of shit, getting $90 change, go to the next store and just do that all day, every day. Um, mm. Eventually I kind of learned, you know, better way, like buying money orders, you know what I mean? And give them a few hundred bucks and get a money order and go cash the money order or buying uh i started buying visa prepaid gift cards because i was living out of hotels and I, I i didn't want my name on the hotel so we'd buy prepaid visa cards so i could put it on you know charge the room on expedia or whatever hotels.com mm. and you can use a prepaid visa card so there's no name attached to it you can just give them a fake name and you know what i'm saying um but the good thing about the visa cards is like there's a there's like a two three four there's like 399 fee attached to a hundred dollar prepaid visa card so it's like you know if you buy one it's like a hundred and four dollars so i'd give them two fake hundred dollar bills and get the hundred dollar prepaid visa card and 95 dollars change so it's almost like doubling up like mm. and a lot of stores have multiple registers so i'd go to like a walmart and hit up you know a register up front the electronic center okay. register the garden center register another one up front and i'd send a girl in with me to do the same thing and it's like we're making, you know, at this point we're making fifteen hundred per store. You know what I mean? A thousand. Yeah. So it, it got better over over time, you know what I mean? But at first, yeah, I was just going buying a couple tacos and getting ninety dollars, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. Shit. That gotta be nerve wracking, huh? At first Man. at first it was. Like I didn't even want to do it. Cause like, you know, you get in your head, like I'm not sure. Like I knew that bills looked good. Like, I'd show them to, like, my wife or certain certain people I trusted, and they'd be like, oh, these look f fucking great. Mm -hmm. But still, like, you know what I mean? I, I study this shit. I know all the, the security features. I know, like, oh, well, the microprinting doesn't look good here. It's a little blurry. But, like, no one really notices that. But in my, in my mind, they do. You know what I mean? So right. I was definitely nervous at first. But, <laughs> you know, after going to, like, four or five different places, ten places, the first, like, ten places I went to, I mean, every, I'd hand them the bill, and they'd just hold it up, look, and cash it. Or just mark it with a pen. Like, they don't even look at the shit. Yeah. You know, they just, they're they trained to just look for a strip. As soon as they see it, boom. Yeah. Or, or mark it. As soon as it marks yellow, take it. So, like, going after the first, like, 10, 15 places, there was never a problem. It was just, like, it was nothing. So then I was just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not nervous anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm spend them everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Man, so. I know for me, my I did like petty shit, you know what I mean, like little crimes. But when I always did uh, did something that probably I shouldn't have been doing, I was the most nervous when I started getting comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I know like eventually I'm gonna get caught if yeah. I do this too many times. And that I think that's what's probably saved me from being like a real fucking criminal. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I already know that's the thing that gets people caught up when they get comfortable oh, yeah. in whatever they're doing and then you start getting sloppy or you start taking shit for granted mm -hmm. where in the beginning when you were really like kind of like I don't know if I'm you know what I mean you start paying attention to everything but then as you get like oh yeah no nah, this it's gonna be easy you know what I'm saying that's when I would that's what me personally in my head I'd be like okay this shit is getting too easy I need to fucking chill out yeah. you know what I'm saying I mean I definitely had had those feel I mean I was always like really cautious and paranoid mm. but uh you know yeah it comes to a point to where like i just kind of accepted like i'm gonna get caught for this eventually mm. you know what i mean like because mm. like uh, you know it's hard to stop when you when you've got i mean every day it's like this is i mean as much money as you want really you know what i mean free money you can print money like, yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> like, i'm doing this till <laughs> the wheels fall off bro you know what yeah I mean? but, yeah but uh but i was always still like really uh cautious you know tried tried to put off the inevitable for as long as i could you know i was mm -hmm. like if i was going back to my hotel room where there were printers and stuff i'd like make u-turns like pass it make a u-turn pass make sure i wasn't being followed mm -hmm. um you know i'd always park far away from every store you know walk so they couldn't get my license plate number you mm -hmm. know what i mean i'd park in some na residential neighborhood over here and and walk you know a little ways to like a shopping mall and just bust them down and grow like a beard for mm. a couple weeks and then shave it and just try and you know what i mean just tried i actually thought about how to you know uh you know 
disguise myself or, or think of actual ways to try to get away with it. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I eventually I started seeing uh, like bolos out for me. Like What's a, bolos? A, a be on the lookout. Oh. Like yeah, there were like pictures of me and my wife breaking these bills in certain stores throughout Knoxville and stuff. So really. Yeah. So oh. at that point, that that was mm. not good. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, definitely sketchy. That's. <laughs> That gotta be a fucked up feeling. Yeah. You go into, into yeah. a store to break a hundred, and your pictures on the wall. Well, like. they, they were posted on like uh, there's this website, Knoxville Crime. It's like oh. a kind of like a public service, uh, whatever. It like you know if you steal someone's bike or something and have mm. video, you can post it on. So like there was stuff like that uh, on that website about me and my wife. And, oh shit! But they didn't know my name or anything. They were just like, we're look, you know, these people are breaking bills throughout the city or whatever. Yeah, man. But, so how long did you um were you going in the stores breaking the bills? How long did that last? Uh, probably about two years. Really? Yeah. Shit, that's a nice little run. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and that's not even what got me caught up. You know what I mean? Really? Because yeah. like I I didn't want to spend it myself. I wanted to just sell them. Because I figured that was a better way to not get caught. You know, which obviously I was wrong on that one. But <laughs> yeah. So like, I was breaking them in stores to to get money to live and this and that but i was also like at that point i was doing heroin like i never used needles i don't like needles but i'd snort it and stuff mm-hmm. so. but i was doing heroin so i'd buy heroin f- you know with fake money from all these different dealers um and you know some of them found out the bills were fake you know get all pissed off i just fucking ignore their calls or whatever some of them found out and were you know impressed they were like holy shit these bills are fake you know and they'd want more of them to buy them you know what i mean uh, so I started selling at, at that point, I, I probably accumulated like 10 different pretty high level heroin dealers that were all buying, buying these bills for every time they'd go to a different city to re up, you know, they'd want however much I could get, you know, get them basically, mm. um, which usually I'd try to sell them like anywhere from five to 10, maybe 15,000 worth of fake. Cause I was selling it for 25 cents, a, a quarter of its value basically. Mm-hmm. So ten thousand dollars would be like twenty five hundred but okay. it, i mean it it'd take a good solid day non-stop printing to make you know what i mean ten thousand dollars to sell them so you bad twenty five hundred a day 20, i uh, mean a day's work yeah i mean no, normally like if somebody put in an order for ten thousand i'd print like twelve thousand five hundred or something you know to have a, a couple thousand myself to go mm. break and then i'd sell him that so if I go break twenty five hundred dollars, I'm getting like two grand out of it, and then if I sell the other ten, I'd get like two grand out of it, you know, mm. roughly. So, like, I, I preferred just breaking them as far as the money was concerned. You know, I mean, it made way more money just going to stores and and buying shit because mm. you you get like eighty cents on the dollar. Mm. You know, what I mean, because you're just buying something for twenty dollars and getting right. change. But I knew that I thought that that was I was more likely to get caught breaking them myself. So I, I sold them to um, but eventually I ended up getting caught by selling them to somebody. So, <laughs> mm, okay, yeah. man. So take me through that. So the drug dealers, the heroin, heroin dealers, they're buying them. You're selling them for 10, 15, you're selling 10, 15,000 worth of counterfeit, making that money. How long, how long? So you did the two years breaking the bills. And then how long did you actually go or was that within the two years that was within the two within, years. within the two years okay yeah. i probably broke them you know i was dealing with that one guy he got arrested so i started breaking them i did that for probably well i mean i guess like really i i was breaking them myself for the two-year period but as it went on i i was buying heroin from these people and meeting people so like at first there was like one guy i'd sell them to and then i'd meet another guy and he'd want them so it kind of slowly stacked up so towards the end I was dealing with probably like 10 guys that were all picking up breaks of heroin, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Buying money for me, but I was also breaking them, you know, but it slowly added up, you know what I mean? Yeah. How much how, mu- how much would you say like out of all of the the counterfeit money that you made, about how much did you make off of that? Out of everything that you sold from from the whole time? Like how much did I walk away with? Yeah. Uh, God, Real is- money. It's hard to tell, man. Everybody asks me, like, what's the number? Like, how much <laughs> How much total? But it's, like, it's hard to tell, really. I mean, if you factor everything in, I like, I probably made around a million of fake. 
but I mean, I, you know, within a two year period, I probably walked away with like, I mean, I broke a lot of them myself. So like, I'd say maybe 700,000, I'd say, give or take. I mean, I don't know though. You know what I mean? It's really yeah, hard. Yeah. Cause it's you're doing it every day. Yeah, and I'm, I'm doing it 10 grand at a time. Yeah. Some days, <clears throat> I, you know, no one would order any and I was feeling lazy. I'd just print out a couple thousand, go break it myself. Other days, somebody would order 10,000 and I'd print out another 10,000 for myself. You know what I mean? So it was just. It was up and down, depending on how I how I felt really that day. You know? Yeah, damn, <clears throat> a million but, dollars. Well, Shit. over the over the course <laughs> yeah, of a couple yeah, yeah. Of years now. Yeah, I'm know? just saying, but that's that's a lot of printing. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a fucking lot of printing back and front, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Shit. And the strip and the watermark in in between them. You know. Yeah, yeah. So like, I would print multiple different layers for for each side. You know what I mean? So like, I'd have one. Uh, file that was just the background color and i'd print the paper a color you know i mean then put it back in and print you know all the black ink and then put it back in again and change all the serial numbers differently so all the bills had different serial numbers um so it took a long time you know i mean yeah like each bill there was three prints for the front of the bill two prints for the back and then another print with the strip and the watermark and then i had to spray it with this chemical to to make so the pens marked on it and then paint on this color shifting makeup and then you know what i'm saying and then take a, a uv invisible ink uv pen and draw a line down the strip to make the strip glow red so like the whole process took a long time you know what i mean so, so for that, one bill yeah how about how long would it take you to make one hundred dollar bill so if i were to just make like one right now or whatever it'd probably take like probably 10 minutes but if you print a bunch of them at once you know it gets faster because mm. you, while these are printing, I'm spraying these ones. And then while those are drying and those are printing, I'm dr- doing, you know what I mean? So, like, it would take 10 minutes to print one bill, to make one bill from scratch. But if I was making 10,000, uh, you know, I, I just go to the computer and press print 10 copies. 20, and yeah. that's 1,000 bucks. And then work on these 10 copies. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, it would probably take me, like, five hours to make 10,000. You know what I mean? Yeah. So where are you getting all the paper from, though? Because I know you say you found it in the Bible paper. Like, are you just, you just, where are you, get, where are you getting the paper from at this point? Well, uh, I tried, uh, like, I looked up online, like, Bible, Bible paper wholesalers, you know what I mean? Uh, and so basically, like, the only places I found were these giant manufacturers that only sell it in bulk you know reams of mm. paper this big come on a pallet from a freight truck you know what i mean so mm-hmm. i didn't want to uh to go that route you know what i mean like because i'm already at this point i'm already busting bills throughout the city like I, i'm paranoid i didn't want a fucking freight truck to pull up at <laughs> some random house and like sign for it i don't <laughs> need a fucking forklift just to get it off the truck you know what i mean so yeah. i was just going to bookstores and and just ripping out blank, the blank pages out of the back, you know what I mean? But I was also like, uh, you know, any way you could accumulate Bibles, really. Like, I, the hotels, I was paying maintenance men at different hotels to, to bring me boxes of Bibles from the hotels. And just um, a bunch of different ways, really. Really? Yeah. And and the maintenance people, they'll just give you the Bible like they didn't need yeah. it for the hotel room? No, well, I'm just taking the blank pages out. So, I mean, oh, so you just I, taking the yeah, ripping them out and giving them back the Bible? Yeah, I mean, oh. some cases I did that. Sometimes they didn't care and just were like, you know, a lot of maintenance men at hotels are fucking drug addicts. So, like, <laughs> yeah. you give them $100, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll take the Bible. Yeah. Bible. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, sometimes I just rip out the blank pages and give them back. You know what I mean? They didn't know what the fuck I was doing or why. It made no sense to them, but right. whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you for tapping in with us. In order to see more clips like this, Check out this video here or check out this one here.